Hello, I'm sat in front of Maxio 30. This time I'm looking at, and so are you, a video screen. I'm also able to type on a PS2 keyboard. So Maxio 30, for anyone who hasn't seen any of my earlier videos, is my 68030 based computer. It's built around a Flex 10 KE FPGA, features a 32-bit SIM slot, um, UART port, 10 meg Ethernet and expansion capabilities. And one of the one of the cards I've got, well in fact the only card I've got attached to it right now is my video card, which consists of a Cyclone 2 FPGA and one mega one meg by 16 of fast SRAM for the frame buffer. Um, so since making my last video I've done some work on the kernel to hook my I squared C controller inside the FPGA into Linux by writing a custom bus interface. I've done the same thing for the PS2 ports. There, there are two, two, uh, two devices can be attached, a keyboard and a mouse, via a single port. Um, the IDE interface is still very slow. The um, e, uh, network card is still on an 8-bit port, but nonetheless I'm making slow progress. Annoyingly, I've had to reduce the board speed because as I've added more devices to the FPGA de design, I found at 40 MHz the board does not reliably boot. So, um, looking at my parts drawer, the next clock oscillated down I've got is a 20 MHz part. This is obviously annoying because it's half the speed of the processor. Um, at some point, I'm going to look for some intermediate speed grades, maybe a 33 megahertz clock to see if I can get reliable um, operation out of that. But in the meantime, I'm on 20 megahertz. It is slow. It's also slow because I'm running a 8 bit per pixel uh, frame buffer mode, even for the text interface, because I've not been able to get any better speed out of a, uh, a monochrome frame buffer console, which I was very disappointed about. But here we are. I'm currently logged in on a Getty um, running as as root, um, so I can look at the I squared C bus using ITC detect, which I think is out of LM sensors because the user land is old. It doesn't have any fancy modern I squared C user land tools, but uh, LM sensors works. So I can list out the um, peripheral peripherals on the single bus numbered one, not zero, which is strange. Um, so. X is our no response, U is a positive ACK. So I've got, or should have, um, U's for 68 in hex, which is the DS1307 uh, real time clock, and also the temperature sensor part number, I forget, I forget, 75 something, is on, which is at 4F on the right hand slide there. So I can get an instantaneous reading from the real time clock with HW clock. There you go. Uh, you can also see that I have to, I've had to do a little trick in my user land that um, could be because modern Linux kernels support multiple real time clocks, but the old user land expects it to be at dev RTC, so there's a little link to RTC0. Um, I should have you know, in my history somewhere, God, I can never remember the path. Nope. There we go, found it. This will read out the temperature from the temperature sensor. So there you go. That's in thousands of a, a thousand degrees. Oh, no, thousands of a degree, that's it. So there you go, 26 degrees. Hit, hold my finger on the uh, IC, it goes up 28. There we go. That's pretty cool, two little I squared C peripherals. Um, and obviously we've also got the PS2 ports, you can see interrupts, you can see how slow that scrolling is, um, there you go, the bottom one is the PS2 port, so obviously I've got multiple lockings, so there's another one where I'm logged in as the non-root user, um, there you go, thingoogle.com, that's for fun. 
I don't think I showed that in the last video. It's rather silly of me. Um, I can also show you how slow the machine is by looking at yeah, the CPU info. Put CPU info. So that's the calibrated loop. It says 17.8 there, so it's going to 20 megahertz crystal. Presumably my 100 hertz tick is not quite 100 hertz. Although, strangely, the, the system time seems to keep okay. Um, I'm trying to think what else I could show you. Uh, hmm, well that's about it really, except for something else running on another login screen, or TTY, on number. There we go. X. Very, very slow. But you can just about move Windows around. You see I have the classic X clients. Come on, move please. And you can see it's tearing. That's probably coming up in the video, but it seems to be tearing slightly. Not sure why doesn't do that in the console, or at least not that I've been able to perceive, and, uh, and X size, but yeah, X load. Now I have, when I had it on a 40 megahertz um, clock, I just about managed to load up X chat using GTK. It was very slow as you can imagine, barely usable, but it, it kind of worked. Um, so this, but this is uh, 8 bits per pixel mode and I was really hoping I could run it at um, even in monochrome because I the first X terminal I ever used was a monochrome I think it was a surplus to requirements um, Apollo domain machine this is going back to the mid 90s um, so yeah mono X would have been would have been fine for me it would have been a lot faster but the X frame buffer uh, driver does not support anything lower than 8 bits per pixel um, I'll show you another little thing. It takes me back to my uni days. Come on. There's the menu. I pressed the wrong button. So if I maximise that, that's a private colour map. It's one of the features that nobody ever sees on computers anymore, where they've all got unlimited colour depth. So this is... Whoops. Come on. When the window is in focus, it uses a private colour map. When another application is in focus, the colour map is lost, it reverts to that back to window. There you go. Poor old Susie. Switch back to X term. So yeah, I suppose I could um, look for Mime Sweeper or X Bill, that was another classic game. Or maybe even X Pilot, not sure how well that would run. But I'm very pleased, it's um obviously excruciatingly slow but I still can't help but be extremely chuffed that I have built a computer that can run Linux and that it can even run up X so I am I'm pleased there's still more things I could do to this machine if I was inclined um, namely try to get it back towards 40 megahertz um, either by looking at my VHDL coding properly for instance, I have no test benches for anything, any of the components I've written, other than the I2C controller. Um, so it's, it's crying out for somebody to have a look at the code and uh, perhaps help me out. Um, on that note, I have finally um, gathered up all of my KiCad files, all of the VHDL, and um, I put it all on GitHub. The link's in the description, of course. Um, so in theory, Anyone can now build a Maxio 30, but there are some gotchas. Well, there are two, two quite large ones, actually. The first is that the FPGA is very hard to get hold of. Um, I got mine from UT, UT Source. Um, I say, well, anyway, part, part number will be in the schematic, possibly in the description. Um, but they are quite hard to get hold of. I think I paid about £10 for mine. They are fiddly to solder because it's a 240 pin QFP um, not impossible if you know what you're doing I managed it um, the other difficulty is the quarter software, software because 
about a year ago now, Intel decided that they would remove the version that you need, the last one, to support the Flex 10K series from their website. You can still find it if you know where to look. Um, so yeah, there are some obstacles for someone building a board, and like I said, it doesn't run at the, or at least my current implementation of the VHDL files does not let you run it at the maximum speed if you want everything enabled uh, in the in the design. Um, but I have have, it, have had it running at 40 megahertz as it was in the previous video, so that shows it probably could be done with some VHDL skills that I, that I lack. Uh, so yeah, maybe in the next video it will be faster again, back up to 40 megahertz. That that would that would be terrific. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.